Let's begin lesson two entitled the Virginia Colony. So let's start with our teaks. We are still in unit two on colonization. We want to always be able to put events in chronological order. We're going to look at why the year 1607 is an important one for us to know. We're going to be talking about the first elected representatives in the New World. Uh, we need to be able to locate Virginia and Jamestown. And finally, we're going to be talking about the beginnings of the plantation system and the slave trade in Virginia, which is going to be an important theme throughout our, uh, our year. So let's continue. So in lesson one, we talked about why colonies were important to Europeans, the things they wanted. We talked about the three G's of exploration. But we also need to know that establishing these colonies was very expensive. It required a number of ships, men, of course, tools and supplies, and all these were required for success. So in order to raise money for this particular colony, they founded the Joint Stock Company, what we now call the stock market. In a joint stock company, investors buy stock in the company and then if that investment makes makes money, that business is successful, the investors share in the profits. But of course, if the, if the business fails, the investors risk losing the money that they invested. So our company, the Virginia Company, was founded to find investors for this new colony on the east coast of North America. Now, they had to start with a charter. Now, a charter is your legal document that gives you permission from the monarch, meaning the king or queen, to establish the colony. And the other thing the charter does is that it gives the settlers in that colony the same rights as the home country. So in this case, they wanted the they needed the charter to to maintain their rights as English citizens in the Virginia colony. So here we go to that year 1607 and the founding of Jamestown. Jamestown was the first permanent settlement in the New World or in the uh, North America for England. They chose a deep water port on the James River. They needed a place to be able to dock their ships. Uh, of course, they wanted to be able to defend themselves from rival explorers. In this case, that meant Spain, because Spain was close by in the Caribbean and in Florida. What they didn't realize was that they had chosen a spot with, with uh, bad water. The land was swampy. It was filled with mosquitoes. The water was, uh, was diseased. And it was poor land for farming. And this is going to have devastating effects on the colony very soon. So what did the Jamestown colony look like? Now even today, uh, archaeologists are currently excavating where the Jamestown colony was and they are finding out new things all the time about it. But we know that generally the Jamestown colony was built in a triangle, that there was a wall around it, and that it had defensive posts at each corner and then a central meeting place. So this is a general idea of what the Jamestown settlement looked like at the beginning. Okay, so these first settlers, first the first group, of course, were all men. Uh, women would come over later. Uh, these men were ma made up of what were called gentlemen, and these were wealthy Englishmen, and they brought over their servants. And because they were wealthy back home, they were not used to the hard work that was going to be necessary for this colony. A much larger group were the indentured servants. That's another term we need to know. Notice that it's underlined and underlined terms. You need to make sure you're writing down that you get good definitions for them. Uh, indentured servants were poor men, and they did not have the money to make the trip, so they sold themselves as laborers for the passage to Virginia. Usually their, their servitude would last several years until their debt was paid. Now, these first settlers arrived in May of 1607, so it was too late to plant the spring crops for the next year. And they also suffered from poor leadership. These leaders were more concerned with finding gold than doing the basic things necessary for the survival of the colony. So because of this, over half of the colonists die in the first year. The next year, Captain John Smith arrives. John Smith was a 27-year-old adventurer. Uh, he's got military experience, even though he is a relatively young man. But shortly after arriving, he was captured by the Powhatan natives and uh, the daughter of the Powhatan chief, Pocahontas, we've heard her name, and of course you know her from the Disney movie. But uh, one of the true things in that movie, there's not much that's true, but one of the true things is, is that she did save John Smith's life from execution. So John Smith took over a leadership role in Jamestown, and he made the rule that he who doesn't work doesn't eat. So what that meant was all of you wealthy gentlemen who are not willing to work, uh, we need your help, and if you're not willing to work, you're not going to eat. However, the next year, John Smith was wounded in a cannon blast, and he was forced to return to England. So the poor leadership resumed. Uh, Jamestown settlers were in conflicts with the natives, and they ended up being very unprepared for the next winter. So the winter of 1609 to 1610 is known as the starving time, which they didn't, when they did not have enough to eat. And by the end of that year, only 60 of the 214 settlers 
uh, were still alive. They ate whatever they could, and we do have archaeological evidence that they engaged in cannibalism. Uh, they used they tore down buildings for firewood, and at the end of that, the settlement was very much near failure. However, a a uh, expedition led by Governor De La Warre arrived the next spring with supplies, ships, and men, and the colony survived for another year. But they still had a problem, and that was that they were losing money. They needed something. The investors uh, were not getting their, their return on their investment, and they needed something to make money. In 1609, a colonist named John Rolfe arrived with Spanish tobacco seeds from the West Indies, and he had actually stolen these from the West Indies because it was punishable by death to take these seeds out of Spanish territory. But he found that this brand of tobacco grew well in the Virginia soil and the climate, so in, after some experimenting in 1612, he introduced this new tobacco crop to Jamestown, and it proved very successful. So tobacco was popular in Europe, and Jamestown now had a profitable crop to sell and a way to make money. In the meantime, Pocahontas, remember her? She's the one who saved John Smith. Uh, back in Europe, it was common to use royal weddings to make peace between countries, meaning the, the daughter of one noble might marry the son of another as a way to make peace between them. So we get a North American version of a royal wedding in which John Rolfe, one of the wealthy colonists, marries Pocahontas, the daughter of Chief Powhatan, and the result is a short period of peace between the natives and colonists at Jamestown. In 1619, this is in the year that we also want to remember for two reasons. The first of these is that the colonists wanted to establish more independence from the Virginia Company and make more decisions for themselves. So they created the House of Burgesses. Uh, and the members who were called Burgesses were elected by the male landowners to make laws for the new colony. Now by, now by male landowners, I'm talking about the wealthy men. Uh, poor men and indentured servants did not have the right to vote. However, the House of Burgesses still is a monumental event in our history because it, it is the first representative government in the colonies, the first example of people electing their leaders in the colonies. Important for us to remember that. So why did the colonists establish governments in the first place? Well, first of all, obviously, they're a long way from home. Uh, the voyage across the Atlantic could take as long as three to six months. And obviously, if you need decisions made, you can't wait six months to a year for every little decision. So you need to be able to have a ruling body of your own. Secondly, there's English tradition. England at the time was ruled by a monarch, but also by Parliament, which was an elected body. And over time, Parliament was actually replacing the monarch as the true ruler of Great Britain. And finally, English practice. Uh, the British at home, the British government at home, largely left the colonies to solve their own problems without a lot of interference. So we're going to talk about this more later on. Another important thing in 1619 is the arrival of the first Africans, and they came to Jamestown as laborers. Now, these first ones arrived really more like indentured servants than slaves, but over time, uh, these African workers would uh, evolve into a system of slavery, which is going to become a major part of Virginia's plantation economy. And we'll talk more about what a plantation means. And the peace ends. The settlers continued their expansion onto native land, and after Chief Powhatan died, the new chief of the, uh, of the natives attacked Jamestown in 1622, resulting in the deaths of 347 settlers. Because of the violence between the natives and Jamestown, the king revoked the Virginia Company's charter and made it a royal colony, which means it came directly under his rule, and fighting would continue along the frontier until 1645, when the natives were finally forced to, uh, to recognize the, the authority of the king and uh, were forced to give away amount, uh, more land to the natives. So let's look at our lesson two thoughts. Number one, what was Virginia's purpose for establishing the Virginia colony? So go back to that first slide and think about what their goals were for the colony. Uh, how did Jamestown become a successful settlement after almost failing? Number three, what two important events occurred in Virginia in 1619? And finally, name at least two reasons why the colonists established governments. So that concludes lesson two. And when we come back, Lesson 3, we'll talk about Colonial Religious Foundations, and we'll see you then.